We should give it away. We should have a picture of you giving it away. It's a giant free. He was free to buy out. He's like, you know, you can talk to people, but don't give away all the information. He's very pleased. Uh, my name is Ismael, and nice to see you here. I come from the CTBR Research Center. Uh, I'm going to present this uh, LIP LTE. It's a, pro it's a modular open source library for LTE. And there's other people involved in this project, Paul Saturn from the CTBR too, and Book, who is with Virginia Tech, and Anthony, who is from uh, UPC in Barcelona. Uh, LibLT is a very new project. We just started this January. Uh, it's a it's a, a library uh, for LT. Uh, with a library, we mean that uh, it's not an application. We don't want to make a inode be a base station or a user terminal. We ju we just want to provide a, a collection of modules that then you can use to implement your base station. But of course, uh, we will provide a reference, uh, a reference implementation uh, of, a, of a base station and a mobile terminal. It's, it's a modular library. Uh, with modular, what we mean is that we want to be able to, if you are only interested in one of the models of the library, to be able to pick it and use it in your application. For those who, of you who, who usually use libraries, uh, you have found probably that sometimes it's very difficult. Maybe you, you want you're interested in only a piece of the library, and it's been it's very difficult to to get it and use it in your own in your own software. Also, we want it to be computationally efficient. That means that we don't want to just implement the standard in a naive way. We want to be clever. For instance. If you have to make a convolution, to you can use the FFT convolution, these kind of things. Also, uh, one of the objectives is to avoid dependencies with other libraries or frameworks, to facilitate the portability to, to embedded systems, for instance. But it's, what it's true, and we, we have seen it today, is that GNU Radio, for instance, has a huge number of users. and uh, if you want your application to be used by other people, you have to provide some 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 way for for these Guinea radio users to to use it. And also, we are, we have uh, other SDR frameworks. We have seen Iris here, but um, we also have Aloe. Uh, I will talk a little bit uh, after, and SCA, which is a military framework for software radio. So we want somehow to, to, to enable uh, these framework users to use this library. Uh, in this table, I, I summarize the related projects on LTE. The, the first one, uh, it's the, the Marisoft software. It's probably the, the, the best uh, software on LTE that we have today. But unfortunately, it's proprietary. It's, it, it is able to run in a quad core in real time with two antennas, 20 MHz bandwidth, and they implemented the eNodeB as well as the MME. Uh, but also it works on, on the N210 user, but unfortunately it's proprietary. We also have the OpenLT. Uh, as far as you know, it's also quite uh, complete. It implements the Fi and Mac layer. And partially the RSC layer, uh, but unfortunately it's not modular. If you are only interested in, in some of the DSP blocks, it's very difficult to isolate it because th there are many dependencies between models. We also have the GLT, uh, but also as far as you know, it, it only implements the synchronization and uh, decoding of broadcast signals. Uh, PVCH uh, is the f is the physical broadcast channel in LTE, and also it, it uses Boost library. 
We also have this LTE cell scanner, which doesn't use a framework, um, but also only implements the synchronization and, and the decoding of the broadcast channels. And it uses IT++. IT++ is a very good library, but when you move to an embedded system, it's very difficult that it, it can run it. And finally, the, uh, there's also SLD, which is a project I was involved in. Uh, it's, this was also a, an LT downloading application for this Alloy framework, but uh, this framework was very focused on distributed real-time processing, and so it wasn't easy to, to use for, for the people. So, yes, why do we want another <coughs> LT library? The first, the first thing is that uh, we want to, as I said, to enable the, the reuse of modules. Um, we want to enable portability. Uh, C++ or Boost are difficult to, f to, to find in, in some embedded platforms. And uh, we would like to avoid the necessity to use a framework. If you want to use it, you, you can use it, but sometimes it's too much overhead. And also, you, it's very hard to, to, to move one, one model from one framework to another. And finally, efficiency, it's, as I said, it's not only implementing the standard. <laughs> so we, we have this objective, uh, modularity. Um, uh, we want uh, to be able to generate code for, for frameworks, and we want efficiency. <coughs> And the design that we approach is a two-layered uh, uh, interface for the models. Uh, at the low level, API, um, we don't impose any rule to the designer. The designer can implement the, the, the DSP block uh, as, it, as he wants. And then uh, we define a high-level API where we do specify some rules. Finally, uh, the, the idea is not, not uh, using all the well-known libraries like FFTW or Bulk, but uh, if they are av av available in the system, uh, use them. This is an example of how the low-level API um, is defined. As you see, there is a new rule. I mean, the, the programmer defines his initialization and, and a function and to deallocate the memory and then you got you, you, you can you can set options you can get options typical typical interface without any without any restriction but then you have this high level interface where we do specify these these three functions for instance that you typically see in all the frameworks all the frameworks start with an initialize function, and then they have a work function, which is called periodically, to perform the DSP, and then a uh, stop function. The idea is that the, the, the DSP designer Im has to implement these functions calling the low-level API, fu API functions. Also, we define this structure, uh, which needs to be followed, where you can see that uh, uh, the designer specifies the, the parameters that must be uh, that configure the, the module at the beginning and then some runtime input or output parameters that this uh, module accepts or produces. From this, all, all this is, is defined in a, in a .h file and from this, using the Python C library, we parse this, this header and using a, a Python script, we convert this this module this mo um, module specification to a general XML file. Then, from this XML file, you can implement uh, using another script. You can generate automatically the C or C++ files that your framework needs. For instance, we now we only have the, this this. Uh, this Python script that generates the, the, the model for, for this framework for Alloy, but it shouldn't be difficult to, for someone to implement uh, a, this Python script to, to convert the XML file to a GNU Radium model. So the idea is that 
uh, with the same library of models, we can generate code for very different frameworks. How do we work? Uh, typically, uh, I mean, here I try to describe how we are working with this library. You start with a MATLAB model, and we use a reference base station, which happens to be the Marisoft, because it's much cheaper than a, than a um, signal generator, professional signal generator. And then we, we make, uh, we implement our receiver code of a specific f functionality. Then we move to a live uh, base station, a live signal that we capture from the base station, and we check that our receiver code is working properly. And finally, we make the transmitter, we check against the receiver that it, we know that is working with the standard, and we, we verify that the signal generated, generated by the transmitter is, is the same than, than the others. Th this, this diagram shows a little about the modular structure of the, of the library. At the bottom, you have small um, modules, each implementing a, a DSP block. For instance, the Viterbi, the Scrambling, the Rain Matching, or the CRC. Uh, these modules are have minimal intermodule dependencies. So if you are only interested on the precoding of the LTE, you can take this file and move it to your application. On the other hand, when you, as you move up uh, to the, uh, in the in the layers, obviously you you become you, you start finding more dependencies. For instance, the, the synchronization algorithm uses. Uh, the, this, this set of files, this is for, for decoding the primary synchronization signal to, to estimate the channel. So if you are tested on the synchronization, then obviously you find uh, uh, some, some dependencies. Well, this is the directory structure of the library. Um, uh, it's, we we organize the, the, um, the blocks in, in categories. And there is a single uh, .h file that uh, the, mod the, the programs using this library need to need to include. And okay, what we've done so far, uh, we've do we, we, we implemented a real-time uh, cell search program, uh, finds scans a, um, an LTE band and f uh, looks for base station and synchronizes with them. Uh, later, if, if we are lucky, we will try to find some LTE based stations. I don't know if we will find some. Uh, the LTE synchronization is, is aided uh, with, is uses two signals which are sent by the, the base station, uh, the primary and the secondary synchronization signal, which are transmitted every five milliseconds. So the receiver needs to perform a correlation with three possible uh, PSS sequences every five milliseconds. Uh, this is very complex, so you need to, to try to be clever on how to implement this. Otherwise, you will consume all the resources only, f only for synchronization. You also have to do carrier frequency offset estimation, and in most of the cases, sampling frequency of the offset estimation. The CFO, you can estimate it from the cyclic prefix or from the PSS. Uh, what we do is to use the PSS because it's, it's more accurate. And <coughs> to estimate the sampling frequency offset, what you do is you observe the, the, the variation in, in the times of the, that the PSS has been set. Finally, uh, well, this is what the cell search program does. It scans an entire band. First, we look at the received signal stre strength, and for those bands where we observe that the signal power is high enough, we try to, to correlate the PSS, and if we find, if we find the, the PSS, then we track the signal for n frames, and we estimate the CFO and SFO, and the cell ID. Uh, well, to implement uh, LTE, LTE is a very complex waveform, and if you want to be able to run it in real time in a laptop, it's, it's very hard. Uh, to start with, the sampling frequency is a problem because not all hardware can has the, the 3.84 clock. 
for instance, the N210 uh, doesn't have it, uh, so you need to resample. Resampling is very expensive, but uh, as Tom pointed out before, the FFTW has a very good performance, even if the length of the DFT is not a power of two. So maybe one of the solutions is not sampling at the clock that you sh should sample, but then not uh, changing the, the length of the DFT, DFT. Another problem is the synchronization. Uh, the synchronization is transmitted uh, in a, is sampled at two, almost 2 MHz, 1.92, but uh, the signal only uses 1 MHz, so you could uh, sample at 1 MHz, um, well, exactly 9, 9.45. Also, uh, using a time domain correlation is very expensive. You should use a DFT-based uh, correlation. Mm -hmm. And then once you find the peak, narrow your, your, your search only to, to where it, this, this signal is supposed to be. The coding is also very expensive, especially a turbo coder, and it needs a very high throughput. So uh, this is something that uh, should be done, probably, uh, to use SIMD instructions. Volk. Bulk, for instance, exactly. <laughs> but Im implementing a turbo encoder with bulk you probably is not easy. Yeah, <laughs> you can do it. And, and also, multi-user detection is also a problem at the base station, especially synchronization and detection. Uh, this little bit the roadmap of, of this project. Um, <coughs> we are start. We started with the downlink. In most of the physical channels of this downlink, we already have some code from this OSRD project that that it was involved in before, and this this code can be reused. For the uplink, also most of the parts are the same than the downlink and can be reused, but there there are still many things to do, like the SIMD decoder, the MIMO. Uh, or in and integrating every all the pieces. Uh, to to su summarize, um, LibLT is, is a library, if, and we aim at modularity. We want uh, to be able to use this library, only parts of this library or all the library in embedded platforms with no framework dependencies or, or third-party libraries, and. Uh, I take the opportunity to call for contributions, either in MATLAB models or C implementations are welcome. If any of you is working on LTE or something related, any kind of implementation is, is welcome. And that's it. Thank you very much. If any question? Uh, how do you correct the sampling frequency offset? Yeah, uh, actually, now we don't correct it because for the synchronization, uh, the, synchronization the correlation is robust against so the sampling frequency offset. We are able to detect it, mm -hmm. and we will show in the in the demonstration later that we are able to detect it. But correcting is very complex, especially if if the SF the the offset is very small. But yes, this is this is a problem. Yes. But are you planning to do this or just resynchronize every frame? If yeah, exactly. If 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 the offset is is small enough, you can you can resynchronize every every framework. You you just have you lose some as an arm. That's that's all. Any other question? Mm. Yeah, you estimate uh, uh, carrier frequency offset and the sample frequency offset, but shouldn't these two normally be linked by the internal oscillator of the receiver? Yeah. So, can you repeat the question for the audio? Yeah, uh, I, I think he asked if uh, we estimate the CTO and if it's uh, related to the uh, offset of your oscillator. Was yes. it the question? Uh, yes. Is there a link? By the reference oscillator in the receiver itself. If yeah. Could, if you could, if, if a future hardware platform, maybe it already does it, uh, uses a, a VCPCXO instead of an, a normal oscillator, so that you could control the frequency a little bit 
and then you could solve both of these problems at the same time. You could just tune the, yeah. the reference block of your receiver to move the yeah. sample rate. Yeah, yeah but not. Yeah, <coughs> but first of all, you cannot do that with all the receivers. Yeah. And and the second thing is that in LTE, um, correcting the CF, the CF the carrier frequency offset is very easy. Estimating it is very easy, very simple computationally speaking, and but correcting it is also very easy. The sampling frequency offset is a little harder, but as we said, if if it is small enough, it's it's only synchronizing every five milliseconds and you solve the problem. Do you explain a bit how we how you do it. <laughs> yeah, to estimate this, the CFO, correcting it is very easy. You, cor you, you multiply by your face. Yeah. And to estimate, you have two ways. You can use the cyclic prefix, and what, what you do is uh, you look at the, at the angle of, of, your, of, of the output of your correlation. Yeah, because you are transmitting the same sequence, so you look at the phase shift. And, and the f if, y if you have uh, already synchronized with the primary s uh, signal, this PSS sequence, which is transmitted by the base station, you know how this sequence looks like. There are only three possible sequences. And once you have correlated and you are synchronized in, in the time domain, at the output of the correlator, you also look at the phase shift between uh, uh, that you have at the output of your correlator. And this gives you the, C the CFO. Yeah, but well, for the first, you measure the speed, the rotation speed, the speed. Yeah. It's the same set exactly. as the Bing Finch and Cox, the standard carrier frequency offset estimation algorithm. Yeah. Is the standard? Yeah. Well, it, it, it is a standard approach. It's used by kind of most uh, synchronization techniques for OTM. So, like Schmidl and Cox and the part we was talking about earlier, if you, if you look at that paper, it's. it's and the SFO? No, for the SFO, you look at the at the variation on your. I mean, when you synchronize, you know what the the time offset. So, uh, if you look at the time offset every frame, you get an estimation of the SFO. If it's very small, if it's very small, you need more time. And you, then you go out of sync. No, if it's small, no. don't go out. Exactly. So if if, yeah, if, if it's small know. enough. If it's small enough, you, you only synchronize at yeah, every five you milliseconds. It you don't need but you don't need to estimate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want it, you could do it, but then uh, you don't have to resynchronize and just estimate in, let's yeah, say, 100 <laughs> frames, which is the offset. Yeah, correct, yeah. But if it's that small, correcting it will be very complex. It's a fractional Exactly. And it's a huge fractional example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then you probably don't need it because your noise will mm -hmm. spread it so far that it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. And you still have the face noise of those later small drifts you have. You will not see. There is no tracking method. That's what we are talking about. You estimate for one frame the frequency of set and you, 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 mm, no. you think it's constant for the frame. No. You, I mean, you can do it, but your estimation is not very good. Because it's subject to, to variation. No, we were talking about uh, sampling frequency yeah. offset, not carrier frequency. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were two two different ah, questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for the carrier frequency offset, that's that's also true. You have to average over one, I don't know, 100 or 50 frames. Each frame is five milliseconds. And uh, well, the, the more accurate you want your CFO estimation, the higher the, the delay on synchronizing with the network. Because there is no feedback, it's uh, only open. Uh, yeah, open there's no feedback. Okay, let me like move the uh, other questions to the open session at the end. Uh, like, yeah. Thank you, Smell again.